just got done at Bloomies. Time to go home. What do I want for dinner? What a crappy day out. Glad to almost be home. It's cold, it's damp, it's rainy. Just a, not a good day at all. But I figured out what I want for dinner, or at least I narrowed it down. It's a toss up between a soup and a sandwich, tacos, and a bagel and cream cheese. Why not all three? On this week's episode of As You Eat It, we're going to take two seemingly distinct cuisines, traditional Jewish cuisine and traditional Mexican cuisine, and we're going to mash them up and see what we come up with. Rather than matzo ball soup and a bagel with a schmear, and tacos and tortilla soup, we're going to make matzo ball soup and an all the way salmon taco. Now, we're gonna to get to that in a second, but I'm gonna change into something a little bit drier and more comfortable. Much better. Time to make the masa ball for the masa ball soup. Three quarters of a cup of masa harina is gonna go into our mixing bowl here. Masa harina is a fine corn flour, not to be confused with cornmeal. Next up, three eggs go into our wet bowl. Poke the yolks and start mixing them up. Nice. All right. Next up, a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil is going to go in. A more traditional ingredient would be schmaltz or melted chicken fat, but I'm plumb out. Our wet ingredients go into our masa, followed by a pinch of salt and sparkling water. I'm using Topo Chico, which is a Mexican mineral water, about three tablespoons. Stir to combine, wrap with plastic, and set aside for a minimum of two hours. The mashup continues with the toppings for our taco. We're making all the way salsa and a cream cheese dressing. The longer they set, the better they get. Let's get to work. This salsa uses all of the traditional ingredients you would see on top of a smoked salmon bagel. We're just presenting it in a different way. We're starting with a pint of heirloom grape tomatoes sliced, followed by half of an English cucumber. I'm gonna cut that down and the sticks, and then a small dice. Same goes for this red onion. We're going to use about a quarter of that. Just cut it down. Planks. Sticks. Cubes. Into the mixing bowl it goes, along with the zest of one lemon. Bang off the excess. We want the juice as well, so we're going to really roll it on the cutting board and press it so the membranes loosen up. Into the strainer we go to catch all the seeds followed by about four sprigs of dill dill has a very distinct flavor and it really isn't for everybody we're going to rustically chop it if you don't like dill you can certainly go with parsley or even some fennel would be nice really use your shoulder there to roughly chop okay and then into the bowl it goes along with some salt and pepper medley to taste Followed by about a teaspoon of capers. If the brine comes with it, that's fine. Give it a stir. Wrap it in plastic and set aside. For our cream cheese dressing, add four ounces of room temperature cream cheese and two tablespoons of sour cream to a work bowl. Add salt, pepper, and lime juice to taste. Then mix and thin out with milk until it is a pourable consistency. Set aside or put into a squirt bottle. Soup's on. We're going to fortify the stock with roasted vegetable flavor. We're going to core one tomato, remove the seeds from one jalapeno, using the demi-test spoon to get the ribs and the seeds out. Peel three cloves of garlic, and have one red onion. Doesn't need to be perfect, guys. It's going into the blender once it's done roasting. Season with salt and olive oil. Give it a shake, then roast at 425 for about 20 minutes or so. Let cool and then transfer to your blender jar. Along with about a teaspoon of annatto, also known as achiote, it's going to give a nice red color to the dish. Some pepper medley, about a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, 
And the secret ingredient right here, it's a four chili spice blend, has arbol and ghost chili. Use about an eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter if you're feeling fancy. Next up, about a quart and a half of chicken broth, that's six cups. The juice of half a lime. All right, pop it on the base, lit it up, and give it a buzz. <laughs> Into our stock pot it goes. Along with about two cups of water. Next up, we're going to peel and slice these two carrots. I'm using a straight peeler for this. Take the ends off. Once again, guys, make sure that you're going for even thickness because they'll cook at the same time. Feed with your thumb and into the pot it goes. Not your thumb, the carrots. Next up, two ribs of celery. Also nice and even, into the pot it goes. Now bring to a boil, should take about 20 minutes or so. Let's see where we are. All right, we're in a good spot. Time to add in our masa balls. I'm using a two ounce disher, but you certainly can use your hands to form the balls, but this will give you a little bit more even size. All right, now we're gonna Reduce the heat to simmer and just let the balls cook until they sink. That's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes. Time to plate them up. Use a slotted spoon to transfer your masa balls and whatever vegetables that come with it to your serving bowl. Ladle some of the broth over top. Very nice. And for garnish, we're going to go really straightforward and simple with some leaves of cilantro. But if you want, you certainly can add avocado slices as well. A special taco requires a special tortilla, and there's no more special tortilla than a homemade tortilla. For our taco, we're going to make an everything spiced tortilla from scratch. Check it out. Look who's back, our buddy Masa Harina. Two cups is going to go into our work bowl here, okay. followed by a heavy pinch of salt and two tablespoons of everything bagel seasoning. So it has the poppy, the garlic, the onion, the sesame. It's all in there. Two cups of hot water and stir to combine and set aside to hydrate for about an hour. While we're waiting for the masa to hydrate, let's make a spice rub for that salmon. The base of our wet rub will be equal parts of smoked paprika, turmeric, and Mexican oregano, about a teaspoon of each. If you can't find Mexican oregano, use Italian or Greek. Next up, about a teaspoon and a half of chili lime seasoning, followed by about a teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of cumin, almost a tablespoon of garlic powder, a pinch of salt, very nice, the zest of one lime. Followed by four green chili seasonings. It's going to give a nice pop to this. About a quarter teaspoon. Pinch of sugar. The juice of one lime. And about a tablespoon of vegetable oil to bind everything together. Mix it all to combine. Make a nice paste out of it. And set aside till we're ready. We have a pound and a quarter of wild coho salmon here. We're going to coat liberally with our wet rub and transfer to a sheet pan, skin side up, and let marinate for a half hour. Time to cook the salmon, make the tortillas, and put it all together. Broil your salmon skin side up on high for four to seven minutes depending on the thickness of the fillets. Remove the fillets from the oven, remove the skin from the fillets, and bake the skin at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes or until crispy. Flake the flesh and remove any excess pin bones. Time to make the tortillas. We have our little cast iron tortilla press and we're gonna make a little plastic cover for it so that way we can easily transfer the tortilla to the griddle. We're gonna use a zip top bag and kind of manhandle that. Okay, lay it down. Heat our griddle on medium. That's about a four ounce ball of our masa. You can certainly use a two ounce ball and that will get about a dozen tortillas. Press it down, put some elbow grease into it. Looking good so far. Now here's the trick. Place your palm underneath and slowly peel back. 
All right, nice. Scooch that one back, make another one. Let those go for about two minutes and then flip them over. Like so, a little pat there. All right, those are ready. Time to reheat our salmon on the griddle. All right, just kind of turn it around, turn it over, break it up a little bit, plate it up. A little bit of our cream cheese dressing, some of our all the way salsa, and our crispy, crunchy salmon skin. Yum. Let's eat. You didn't think I forget dessert, did you? This may be the easiest dessert you will see on As You Eat It. Take a gala apple, cut a little cheek with your paring knife, like so. Trim it down again into our bowl. A little honey, symbolic of a sweet new year. And some chili lime seasoning for a little pop. Kind of like a mango nada, but with a fall twist. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. As always, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram, same name as you eat it. Follow me on Facebook, same name as you eat it. Come see me at Williams Sonoma Columbus Circle or at Bloomingdale's. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus since I'll be in Richmond, Virginia this week, but I will be back there in the future. If you would like to be an executive producer of As You Eat It, follow me on Patreon. The link is right there. As always, cook how you want to cook, eat how you want to eat, mash it up how you want to mash it up, eat as you eat it. Now, time for dessert.